everybody, Yan on the road here. I'm at the Datai in Langkawi and I'm going to interview Irshad, the head naturalist, and who's done, who has lives, who was, who is, who lives in Langkawi now for more than 35 years. I'm going to interview him, and he made amazing documentaries about Langkawi. Hope you enjoy this video. So, Ishad, yes. why did you leave your banking career and uh, come to Langkawi and not perhaps Borneo? Right. First, I grew up with a father who always took us into the forest. And uh, my childhood memories are running around barefoot with the Orang Asli, the natives of the Malaysian forest near Tasik Bura. So I always grew up with animals uh, and, and forests around me and school, my school holidays, especially. Uh, but then I was also into sports. I, believe it or not, I played rugby and I did some athletics at uh, that time, my younger days, and hockey. And the banks had very good uh, sports teams. And when I finished my studies, they offered me a job. In that job, I could do a lot of sports as well on the side, because they had good teams, and, and they were they were into it. The banks themselves were. There were a lot of competition between the banks. So I said, okay, why not? I could I could do some sports uh, as well. And uh, but after four and a half years of sports and a couple of uh, injuries, especially rugby injuries. I didn't want to spend my time in a city, in a glass tower, if you understand. Yeah. And so I came to, uh, I went to the east coast of Tioman Island. Tioman. You love, you love Tioman, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I went snorkeling for the first time. I was in my uh, early 20s and I went snorkeling for the first time ever. And I fell in love with, I was blown away with the colors I saw. And in the plane heading back, and the plane heading back, uh, I knew in my head that I can't be a banker anymore. And I, I resigned and I traveled around the country for about three and a half years, bumming, uh, sailing, surfing, doing that kind of stuff, until I, my true calling, I understood my true calling, and nature was it. And when I came to Langkawi, I immediately fell in love with the island. And I thought this was the place for me to do some conservation work as well as nature trips. So now we're in the mangroves with Irshad and I'm still going to ask him a few questions. So what is your most memorable animal encounter in Langkawi? Uh, well, I would say... Um, it's in the water mm -hmm. and till today it was 2002 that I swam with it and mm -hmm. till today when I ever talk about it, mm -hmm. it my hair goes on ends it was an amazing experience it was uh, Christmas Eve mm -hmm. and word uh, was on the grapevine that there were some whale sharks out in the open sea and so me and a couple of friends hired a boat immediately about six or seven of us uh, we were sitting on the beach when we got that information and so we got a, a, a boat hired quickly and we within 25 minutes out on the open sea we will come to the whale shark and I jumped into the water and I was swimming with about five or six whale sharks wow. anywhere from the smallest was about five meters and the largest was a good 10 meters or so seven to ten meters wow. but you know but why did you said? Not with whale sharks. Whale sharks are, are plankton eaters yeah. and they've not known to take people. Yeah. They are what we call a, like the basking shark yeah, in, in, in Europe. Mm -hmm. So they eat little tiny uh, uh, plankton and very small fish. And they were all up on the surface. And I jumped in and the swim with them was amazing. And I accidentally, which was naughty of me, Touched and you must never do that, <laughs> I accidentally stretched my hand out <laughs> and the fish 
accidentally caught hold of my hand with his pectoral uh, his, uh, fin mm -hmm. and he took me for a ride. I went about five or six meters into the water and I knew I had to release and uh, I, I was abuzz for, for two months after that, year to year grin and even thinking about it bring me a lot of uh, good memories. Uh, I heard that you uh, were create that you are creating animal corridors. That's right. Under uh, the Datai pledge, mm -hmm. we have four pillars, mm -hmm. and one of the pillars called Wildlife for the Future uh, is to try to reconnect all these uh, fragmented habitats together. So, mm -hmm. in uh, at the present time, Langkawi has lost about 50% of yeah. its natural heritage, mainly to agriculture, and then road infrastructure, cutting through and isolating, separating habitats. So we need to create these wildlife corridors mm -hmm. so our animals can migrate across core ecological zones. Mm -hmm. And this way, so they can acquire sh um, uh, food, shelter and very important to retain a healthy gene pool. So what are animal corridors and how many will there be? Right. We are planning we had a gentleman, okay. his name was Ben, and he's a student with USM Penang. And he had come here to do the necessary study ground uh, groundwork. Mm -hmm. And he has identified four areas where we will create these corridors connecting the uh, one, two, three, four different corridors connecting five different uh, habitats. It includes the Datai, Sawa, uh, a mangrove area, uh, the mountain in the middle of the island, Gunung Raya, and on the east coast as well. We, we create this so that animals can safely cross by what we call rope bridges. Mm -hmm. This is the short term uh, arrangement to create these rope bridges across so the highway. The, yeah. can, the monkeys could just climb exactly. from one tree to the other. Yeah. Most of our animals are arboreal. Mm -hmm. Monkeys, squirrels, mm -hmm. civic cats, uh, uh, slow lorises. Mm -hmm. So these animals are what we hope will utilize these um, corridors, overpasses, mm -hmm. uh, and um, keep them out of danger and uh, road accidents and so forth. Mm -hmm. okay. What was your biggest achievement for the Datai? Well, I'm very proud of the Datai Pledge. Mm -hmm. And of course the Datai Pledge has been in the works, in, in the works for well over many years when I started working here. But all I had to, to have was a general manager, mm -hmm. like Mr. Giraudon, mm -hmm. who just uh, ran with it, heard of the overview required, he added things to it as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that has been an incredible achievement for us, is the Datai Pledge. And the support we're getting from the parent company, mm -hmm. from the general manager, and the team we have. We have an incredible team for wildlife for the future, mm -hmm. a wonderful a group of marine biologists for fish for the future. Mm -hmm. And have you met Remy? Yeah. Yeah, and he's involved in Pure for the Future. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, uh, uh, we have Youth for the Future as well, where we'll engage kids in school. I think that is the best uh, thing we've done so far. Thank you, Mr. Irshad. You're, you're, it was my pleasure indeed. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>